In this video, we're going to take a look at the prepayments tracker. You understand what prepayments are, you're entering them correctly, whether that's in Xero or other accounting software, but you also want to keep track of them and make sure that your balance sheet amount is correct, agrees to what it should be. For years, I have used a spreadsheet to track my prepayments, and in this video, I'm going to give you a look at it. So I've created it in Google Sheets, Excel would work just as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the tracker and we're going to look at half a dozen different transactions and I'm going to show you how I would fill it in. So this is my blank tracker and I'm going to create it for a financial year. So I want to show my year month by month and I'm going to start off by going to this cell here and I'm going to enter the first month of the year. Now I'm going to enter it as mid month as the 15th. So I want January 2022. And the interesting thing about entering in that way as the 15th of January, I've then got calculations that follow through and it simply adds 30 days. So if I put mid month, i.e. the 15th, 30 days will take me to the next month. Whereas Let's just show you if I had put the date in here as the last day of the month, the 31st, then it doesn't quite work. So it's a lazy way to get months onto your spreadsheet. We can ignore this error. It's simply because there isn't any information on there. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So now I can see that very quickly I've got the months of the year along the top of my spreadsheet. I'm then going to start off by entering any prepayments that I have from the year before. So what was my prepayment balance at the end of last year? So I'm going to start on the first line, the details and explanation so it's clear what this is about. It's zero consultancy and anything that I enter in this spreadsheet is going to be in blue. The period it covers is the 1st of October last year to the 30th of September in the current year. What's the total of this prepayment? Now, if you're VAT registered, ignore the VAT. That's the amount you're going to expense. So this was £360 for the year. The next column, months. How many months does this relate to? The cost of this is for 12 months of the year. I've then added a column for code. So that's the accountancy code that you're going to use. This is optional, but I'm using zero. So this is the code in zero that consultancy would go to when it's being expensed. That code is 412. And the final thing that I'm going to enter here is the opening balance. So this will already have been done, but let's just do the sum. So we know that this covers the period October to September. 12 months, £360, so the cost is going to be £30 per month. So at the start of the year, nine months are prepaid, so this value, the opening balance, no surprise, is £270. Then what I'm going to do, and you can see the error has disappeared, and there's a calculation in here. I've got this in here already, so I don't need to think about it, but I'll just talk you through it very briefly. It's saying take cell C5, so it's the total value and divide it by the number of months. What could be more straightforward than that? So 360 divided by 12, the amount to expense is going to be £30 per month. I've got dollar signs here, which means if I copy this over, C will stay as C and D will stay as D. And that's what I want because I don't want it to move as I put the calculation into other fields. I've also got this amount being rounded, so equals round and then comma two simply says it's going to be rounded to two decimal places. This is simply saying, what am I going to expense each month? The opening prepayment is 270. I need to expense 30 pound a month and I need to do it for nine months of the year. So I'm just gonna drag that over to September you can see that it works for me and we can see when we get to the end of the year the closing balance is nil. If you have anything else, opening amounts, you would fill them in. 
I'm lucky I only have one. Okay, our opening balance is sorted. Now we have our first prepayment during the year. Let me just enter the details. So we've got a rent invoice. It's for the period January to March. It's £600 in total. It's quarterly rent, so it's over three months of the year. And this is simply the rent code in 0469. So I know the period is January, February, March. So I need to split that cost over those three months. My calculation is here and I can cheat by copying it down. So that makes sense. That shows us. £600 in rent, the cost is going to be January, February and March. What I also need to do is because I've added something to my spreadsheet, I need to go to this line added this month and I need to pick up this £600. So if that calculation wasn't there, just remove it, I would just say equals £600. Now I can see what my prepayment balance is. We know the opening balance, we can now see that the end of January we expect it to be 640, the end of February 410 and the end of March 180 because nothing else happens during the period January to March. So obviously we would need to check those figures and we would do that in zero. Heading into zero, here is our balance sheet and we can see February 410 January the month before 640 and our opening balance 270. So because we've checked these amounts, we've said agreed to our accounting software, we can tick the January figure and tick the February figure. We haven't looked at March, but you can trust me that March agrees as well. Now we get to the month of April and it's no surprise that we have another rent bill. So again, it's rent. The period is different. This time it's April to June. It's still £600. It's still to be expensed over three months and the code is the same. So this time I need to expense it April, May and June. So I could just copy that formula. I'm being lazy. Paste it April, May and June. So now we're hoping that when we look in zero, the prepayment balance is 550, 320 and 90. And our balance sheet is the other way around, but here we have April 550, 320 and 90, the prepayment amount. So again, we can tick these boxes. Okay, we're agreed up to the end of June. Now we come to July. And this time we've got a couple of entries. So we've got van insurance. It's for a full year, £600. There's a lot of £600 here for 12 months of the year. 433 is the insurance code. And then we've got our third rent bill. So we just need to be careful what we're doing. So we know that this is going to be expensed from July to June. So I need to head to July. I'm going to take the calculation from here. I'm going to copy it and paste it and I know that this goes right to the end of the year so this time it's a little bit different when we get to the end of the year we will still have a prepaid amount half of that invoice will be prepaid at year end so then we've got the rent and this is July August September so again just take the calculation and copy it down so we had £600 added in April and you have to remember to do this. So that's the April amount here. Then when we get to the month of July, we need to go to this line added this month. We're going to say equals and we need to pick up the two July figures. It's important to remember to do that. But if you go into zero and your figure doesn't agree, you'll know that there's something wrong. So now I think we can look at July and August. We can't look at September because we haven't got to the end of September yet. So what we're expecting, 1,010 for July and 730 for August. And when we head into zero and look at our balance sheet, we're very happy to see prepayment line July 1,010, August 730. So again, we can tick two boxes and that's as far as we've got to. So we can't tick anything beyond August at this stage. But let's look at what would then happen in the month of October. 
So in October, and we have two more entries. Again, no surprise, the fourth rent bill for the year, one, two, three, and four. And then again, no surprise, zero consultancy kicks back in for the next year. This time though, look, it's a little bit more expensive. So we've got the rent and we need to expense that October to December. So we know what to do now. It's over three months, head over to October, find a calculation, copy it and paste it. Drag it October, November, December. And then we've got the zero consultancy. It will go continue into the next year, but we're not looking at the next year at this stage. So we can only expense for the final three months of the year. So we can see it's gone up. It was £30 a month. It's now £40 a month. And this is the balance that we expect to have at the end of the year. We must remember we need to go to the ad this month. And what alerted me is I saw some negative figures here. So I need to go to this cell. And I want to say during the month we have added this amount and this amount. When we get to the end of September, we'll check it to zero. Take the box, the same October, November and December. So that is the prepayments tracker. So if I recap what we did, we started by inputting the first month into cell G4. Then we added any prepayments that were in place at the end of the previous financial year, i.e. at the start of the year. And we expense those prepayments in the relevant months. Then throughout the year, we added any further prepayments as they happened. We make sure to record the period that they cover, the total cost, the months, the code, and then we expense these again in the relevant months. Each month that we add something new, we have to remember to go down to the added this month row and add in the values. Then at the bottom of our spreadsheet, we see our prepayment balance at the end of each month and we want to check that and agree it to the trial balance or the balance sheet in our accounting software, in our case, zero. I hope you find the video useful. You can create your own prepayments tracker similar to the one I've created or if you're interested, you can have access to my template. I've put a link down below where for a small fee, you can purchase it on Gumroad. It is important to make sure that your prepayment balance is correct. Until next time, happy tracking.